Handhelds are more than just a piece of technology. They are a form of entertainment that captivates you, removes you from the current stress of the world, and teleports you to a place of pure, calming escapism at the palm of your hands, wherever and whenever you want. 2021 was the year handhelds became cool again. Number 10 on our list goes to the cheap and cheerful Pow Kitty V90. This is a $39 clamshell handheld that can emulate a wide number of your favorite retro consoles. It's not powerful enough to push PS1 gameplay, but your classic NES, Game Boy, Mega Drive and other consoles will play well. But the main reason as to why I'm featuring it comes down to affordability. At $39, it's the cheapest on the list, features an awesome clamshell design that makes it incredibly portable, and it has a nice bright backlit screen that can be seen perfectly day and night. This is what I'm calling the entry-level handheld. It's one that I recommend to start on if you're thinking of diving into these Chinese handhelds. And it's the perfect handheld for kids because it's affordable and the menus are easy to understand. It gets the job done and is a great first purchase for those interested in this niche. The RG552 is Ambernick's latest 5-inch handheld that comes with a new chip compared to many on this list. What you are probably wondering though is why it's so low on the list because it has been highly anticipated for months now and if you've been around this channel for a while you'll know I'm a big fan of Ambernick. Where do I start? Firstly I'll start with the price tag because it comes in at around $230 which pulls itself out of the affordable category and puts itself in a category that competes with the Nintendo Switch Lite, the Analog Pocket and the upcoming Steam Deck. And that, in itself, is its biggest problem. It's just far too expensive for what it can do. After testing it, it feels very much like an unfinished product. Gameplay quality is a little all over the place, the stock firmware is incredibly buggy, and the overall size doesn't make it pocket-friendly or comfortable anymore. It feels like Ambernick has lost its touch with this handheld, but that said, I do think it will be a grower, not a shower. New firmware will make its way into this handheld, which should improve the overall experience, and the new chip inside is powerful enough to play PSP and Dreamcast well, but because of the Android OS, it will require some tinkering. I advise waiting out to see what the community can do with this handheld, but as of now, it's just not worth the $230 price tag. I'll come back to it in a few months, and when it has a price reduction. It's simply on the list because it has potential, but as of now, I'm not impressed. Now moving on to some of Anbernick's more affordable handhelds. In 8th place is the RG280V, one of the best pocket-friendly retro handhelds on the market that boasts superb build quality alongside reliable gameplay performance. The RG280V sells for around about $79, features a 2.8 inch IPS display, 512 megabytes of RAM, and enough power to emulate most PlayStation 1 games. But my favorite part about the handheld is quite simply the size. It fits in the palm of your hand, features a fairly large screen, and is built like a brick. Imagine the build quality of a Nokia 3310, but the internals of a mini Game Boy of some kind. 
in my opinion, it's Ambernick's most underrated handheld. And because of the smallish price tag, it's another great introductory handheld for those that want to start collecting these weird and wonderful things. The Pocket Go S30 is a fairly old handheld, but I still love it to this day. It was one of the first popular handhelds to feature stacked shoulder buttons, and they seem to keep getting more and more comfortable by the day. On the inside is a quad-core processor, 512 megabytes of RAM, and a 3.5-inch display with a shell that reminds me of the 8-bit Do controllers. Rumors actually have it that an 8-bit Do designer worked on this thing too, which kind of makes sense. The Pocket Go S30 starts at around $90 and is getting somewhat rarer by the day, but nonetheless, that comfortable form factor and the PS1 gameplay alongside the single analog stick helps make this a really awesome handheld for those that want to dive a little deeper into the retro handheld scene. The screen isn't the best, nor is the speaker quality, but I'm going to class it as the best middle-of-the-range affordable handheld. Now we move on to the bigger handhelds, the handhelds that pack some power and feature great build quality, and that's exactly what the RG351V does. It's yet another handheld from Ambernick and is its most popular vertical handheld which takes inspiration from the original Game Boy DMG. It's also a handheld with the oh so popular RK3326 chip that can emulate everything up to PlayStation 1 incredibly well. Yes, the chip is getting a little outdated, but it's still a very reliable chip when emulating games. So, packaging it up in a vertical format with a 640x480 resolution screen was an ingenious decision by Ambernick. This handheld feels like a DMG, but performs like a PlayStation, and because of the resolution, it plays Game Boy Advance games and other retro games in the perfect aspect ratio. It has a large 3900 milliamp battery, 1 gigabytes of RAM, and 4 shoulder buttons to really help with gameplay quality. Overall, it's one of the best vertical retro handhelds out there, and like most of Ambernick's products, the build quality is perfect. This is one that you probably didn't expect to be on the list, and that's the Funky S, the world's smallest foldable handheld. I can hear you asking, Brandon, are you joking? That... I am not. I genuinely love this little thing. The Funky S is a handheld emulator that can emulate most retro consoles up to PlayStation 1. Yep, you heard that right. You can actually play Crash Bandicoot on this thing without any problems at all. What makes this console so great is that firstly, it's run by a small team of incredibly passionate gamers, and also they've made the user interface incredibly sleek, making it feel easy to use and somewhat more fluid than most of the handhelds on this list. It's definitely not a handheld to play on for hours on end. It's a handheld that's literally designed to be on your keychain that you open up when you're bored on the go. The $70 price tag may put people off, but it makes for a great gift and a new addition to any retro handheld collection. Coming in at number 4 is the Pow Kitty Max 2. It's Pow Kitty's best handheld to date that features a large 5-inch display, perfect ergonomics, and decent emulation quality. If you've been following us for some time now, you'll know we're not big fans of Pal Kitty, but over the last few months, they've really upped their game, and the Max 2 sits high on our list because they simply listened to what the customers wanted and acted upon it. The Pal Kitty Max 2 is the most comfortable retro handheld on the list. This is due to the rounded nature of the device, the large bright screen, and the stacked shoulder buttons that feel like they're straight from a Nintendo Switch. This handheld again uses the RK3326 chip, so you'll be able to play all of your retro games up to PlayStation 1, including a little bit of N64, but don't get your hopes up. What makes this handheld so great is because it's the best RK3326 handheld with a 5-inch screen, period. The analog sticks are high quality, the screen bright, has great viewing angles, and although it might not be pocket friendly, it's the perfect handheld for playing on the couch or on a train journey. It's one for those of you that like a bigger screen and want the best ergonomics possible from a retro handheld. It's priced at around $129 and usually comes preloaded with a bunch of games because Pow Kitty likes to be naughty. 
Unfortunately, as of filming this review, the Retroid Pocket 2 Plus has yet to land on our desks, which is disappointing because it's literally on its way, and from what we've heard, it's going to be one of the best affordable handhelds out there. But we can't feature it because, well, it's not here yet, so we're going to pay respects to the original Pocket 2 and give you some insights into what the 2 Plus can apparently do. So, the original Retroid Pocket 2 was a game changer for quite simply being a handheld that can emulate everything up to N64 for just $70. It had incredible build quality, stacked shoulder buttons, a wide selection of transparent shells, and a good enough screen to make this a killer handheld. This handheld alone spiced up the scene and forced Ambernick, Palkitty and others to really think about pricing. The Retroid Pocket 2 sold thousands throughout 2021, and now they're building in a drop-in kit for the older handheld in order to push its boundaries to GameCube emulation. The Go Retroid team are not only releasing a drop-in kit which adds touchscreen for old customers, they're soon to be releasing the Retroid Pocket 2 Plus for only $99 that new customers can buy. This again adds new chips, a touchscreen, Android OS, and the ability to emulate GameCube and maybe even some PS2 games. But as of now, we have yet to test it, so take this with a pinch of salt. If you want to see our review when it arrives, be sure to subscribe. But as of now, I'm pretty confident that the 2 Plus is going to be the best retro handheld under $100 in 2022. One that I didn't think would even make it on this list has somehow managed to take the second spot, and that's the brand new Analog Pocket. This is not an emulator. This handheld right here is using FPGA technology, which, put simply, tries to duplicate the technology from the original hardware, making the cartridges think they're being played on the real thing. This makes gameplay literally flawless. The Analog Pocket works with all Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance cartridges. If you buy their adapters at $30 a pop, you can also play Game Gear, Atari Lynx, Neo Geo, and Turbo Graphics games too. What surprised me when reviewing it was quite simply the attention to detail in the insanely crisp 3.5 inch display that has a PPI of 615. This is 10 times more than the original Game Boy DMG. Not only that, it also works with a dock, allowing you to play your Game Boy games on a HD TV connected up to four Bluetooth controllers, if you want that, or have that many friends for that matter. It's like something from the future, and it feels incredible in the hand. Ever since getting it, I've played it almost every day, and that's not even a joke. Analog have really made something special here, and they're even releasing new updates in the future that bring out more features with the clean OS, like making music, building a library, and doing what they state as preserving gaming history. Yes, it is expensive and Analog have made it somewhat impossible to buy due to their small stocks, but if you can get one, you will be buying one of the best handhelds of the last few years. So just make sure you've got some cartridges laying around. And finally, now coming in at number one is the sleek blue metal smurf that is the RG351MP. Again, this may surprise you, but it's the handheld that I keep going back to, and it's the handheld that I genuinely love. The RG351P is another handheld by Ambernick that uses the RK3326 chip, but this time they've added a beautiful 4x3, 3.5 inch display, a smooth, comfortable metal shell that feels like you're holding Optimus Prime's butt cheeks, and teamed it up with an easy to use, reliable user face that works straight out of the box. It emulates everything up to PlayStation 1, and it's a handheld that a child could understand, or even someone that's never touched a handheld before, and this is why I love it. Recently, the handhelds that have been released, and also the handhelds that are coming out, tend to get more and more complicated by the day, allowing no room for newcomers to the scene to enjoy these new products. But the RG351MP ignores that and goes for simplicity, and that's why I can rely on it, and that's why I can chuck it in my backpack, and that's why when I'm with friends they can pick it up and have a go themselves with ease. It's reliable, easy to use, and has the best build quality out of the bunch. 
it is the best retro handheld on the market at this moment in time for all types of handheld gamers. It has the perfect aspect ratio for retro games, features two analog sticks, four shoulder buttons, USB-C charging, and great battery life. And because it's running on a Linux operating system, you know this won't get slow over the years and it will perform just as well today as it does in five or 10 years time. It's a timeless, trustworthy handheld that doesn't complicate things and I can comfortably say nobody will be disappointed when they buy this. The RG351 MP is Retro Dodo's best handheld of 2021 by a long shot, even if it's not the most powerful, but for me build quality and reliability plays a bigger part than power and that's why I think a lot of handhelds coming out in 2022 may struggle with this.